hello and welcome to a chessima chess today i have something amazing absolutely amazing will you look at this this is the chess challenger from Fide, not from Fide, from Fidelity Electronics. This is a chess computer, but it is not just any chess computer. Oh no. This is the first ever commercially available chess computer. This thing was designed by Fidelity Electronics in 1976. The first edition was called the CC1. It was very flawed. Uh, for instance, they had done the notation the wrong way. So instead of the ranks being labeled 1 through 8, it was the files that was labeled 1 through 8. Um, and the machine didn't play very well. Uh, and that was the result of Fidelity Electronics rushing it to market be the first ones to have a real chess computer. This one is the CC7. Uh, this was released in 1979. So this piece of plastic and circuit board uh, and pieces, this is 43 years old. How amazing is that and it works so let me just plug it in and just like that we are simply ready to play some chess and I'm going to play this thing and then I hope that you will sit back or lie down, relax, just drift off into the 64 squares of the black and white beautiful world that is chess. And you can feel free to either follow along on the game or just listen to my voice and all the small sounds here and just drift off to sleep or whatever you want uh, before I start playing I want to give a very special shout out to my partner for this video because uh, these things are um, not free to get, especially not in working condition. So I'm very happy uh, to have partnered with yours app for this video because they made it possible for me to acquire this. Yours app is a well-being app with many calm and relaxing ways to improve your quality of life. And because you are a fan of this channel, you can get a 60% discount of a full year plan with yours app if you use this link, yoursapp.com slash chess, or use my promo code chess at the checkout. This is the app. It has all sorts of motivational, relaxational, anxiety reducing features and check this out, 
they even have an ASMR category. Very happy that they were able to partner with me for this video. I think it's an excellent fit for the channel. And again, you can get 60% off on a full year plan if you use yourzap.com slash chess or you use just the affiliate code chess at checkout. And now for the game. I will press this CB button and it will tell me the move it wants to make. So it wants to go from uh, D2 to D4. So that is that move. And I think the machine has excellent taste in openings. I also play the queen's pawn with, uh, with white. Now how to respond? Should we try the Budapest Gambit? I will key in the move Knight from G8 to F6. So I will say A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 8 to F, F, six and then i will enter the move and we hope that the machine will play pawn from c2 to c4 but it has not instead it played g7 to f3 so that is this move right here. Okay, so the reason I played knight to f6 is because I have a whole plan against a different move than this particular knight move. Had the machine instead played pawn to c4, I would have played e5 and I would have had a cool plan that I even did uh, a video on called the Budapest Gambit. Uh, alas, the machine did not fall into this and instead played knight to f3. And I think we should take a moment to appreciate how well they actually made this chess board um, all the way back in 79. Uh, the pieces are magnetic they are not falling off. Um, so you can see the little magnet there. And they are made of wood. And they are quite beautiful. Look at that. It's not uh, the same as the other cheaper looking plastic set. That was uh, I played in the other video. Now how how will we respond here? Uh, we could just play symmetrical with pawn to d5. Um, we could play pawn to c5. Try to challenge the center. Um, not knowing the strength of the machine, I think we should play a little bit uh, carefully and just start with a simple move like pawn from d7 to d5. So I will key that in d7 to d5. And enter that move. And the machine will think. Machine will think. So that is the other knight, like so. Right. How will we re 
respond. I think we should be a little bit aggressive now. So I'm going to play uh, C7 to C5, like so. And let me just key that in. Okay. Okay. So now it wants to play from D4 to C5. So it's capturing like so the pawn that I have offered up to it in what we in chess call a gambit. Uh, it, it comes from uh, Italian like many other chess words because of uh, the Italian chess history. You can watch my video on Greco, uh, who some 400 years ago was uh, making big waves in the chess world, and he was from Italy. Uh, we have also have a word like fincetto, that is also an Italian chess word. Um, and the gambit means to something like put your leg forward as to trip someone. So we offer up this pawn and then we uh, hope that we can uh, regain it with some advantage, gain some tempo uh, in developing our pieces. I think first of all we will play knight to c6 and let me just key that in here. Alright, so what does the machine want? It wants to play c1 to f4. So for now the machine seems to be playing excellently. It has uh, one a pawn, so it's up one pawn, uh, even though I think we can maybe get that pawn back at some point. Um, but it has also developed three pieces and it is attacking e5 where I had very much hoped to put my pawn and now I cannot because it is attacked twice by the bishop and the knight um, and only defended once by my knight. So first of all I'm going to put out my bishop as well so as to have it outside the pawn chain because the next move I want to play is pawn to e6 to open up an attack here on the pawn and to solidify my center and concede that I will not be able to play pawn to e5 uh, just yet. So I will play bishop from c1 to f5 from c8 to f5. So now it plays e2 to e3, just a simple move here allowing me to maybe get my hands on this pawn here and we are in a very uh, sort of typical chess game. We are fighting for the center of the board and we want to develop our pieces. Um, so yeah, uh, quite, uh, quite a classical chess game and a very impressive performance so far from the chess challenger CC7. So let's see, how about I play 
the move that I was planning, pawn from e7 to e6. Let's go and put that in the machine and see how it responds. And enter. So it plays it plays C three to A four. So that is kind of interesting. So it plays the knight here to this square here. Now the knight hello, I'm looking out for you, is what it's saying to the pawn here because it wants to protect that pawn. Um, and I was hoping that we could maybe exploit a move like that. I think this looks like a potentially weak move. I am uh, considering I'm considering this check here, which I think pretty much uh, forces the machine to play c3 in order to defend the knight from with the queen, because otherwise I could come and capture it. And um, then I was hoping I could come and capture this pawn, but I am afraid I can, let's say I do that, I am afraid I can get forked with this move here, attacking two of my pieces, and if I capture it is, it is already defended, but maybe we can calculate a little further, maybe I can still capture that. And when they capture us, when the machine captures us, we can um, capture either with our knight or our queen. If we capture with our queen, that's the most forcing. That would be check. Now... If the queen blocks the check, we pick up the knight and we have a good game. If the king moves, uh, then we should be doing quite all right because we have uh, sort of one, two pawns. So we are down a piece for two pawns, but the king position is precarious here. It can't castle, it can't get away from the attack. Um, and if they block with the knight back like this, do we have some amazing move there? Mm, maybe not. Maybe knight back there is just uh, is just winning, and uh, so maybe we will reverse this whole line. This is the position with the bishop right here. No, I'm sorry. This is the position. So we are looking for a way to capture this pawn. And that may not, such a way may not exist. Let's look at this line again. I can check with the queen. I think I think c3 is forced. And do we have any anything that's really good there? Let's let's try the force line again. I capture here. They play the fork. Um Capture. I think I should capture with the bishop so as not to fall to the knight. 
they capture. If I capture with the queen, I think we saw that. I think that we saw that the machine will have a nice position. How about capturing with the knight, like so? Now we are uh, threatening discovered checks, so that as soon as we move the knight, the queen will have an attack on the king. So let's say that the defensive move from before they play the same move okay but now we have some very nice options for instance we have this check uh, it's protected by the bishop and when the king moves we can capture this knight so I think I don't think that this way of blocking the check really works. Um, I think in I think this is a good position because of this knight has it's, it's possible for this knight to go here with the check uh, covered by the bishop. So um, I think I will actually. Go ahead. I will go ahead and in this position I will throw this check uh, hoping for a strong attack. I think my calculations were quite okay and I think we can uh, maybe get some advantage. Maybe I am correct that knight to a4 is not good or maybe this chess computer from more than four decades ago uh, will teach me a lesson about chess. So I will play queen from d8 to a5. So it plays c2 to c3. As we discussed, we it's now protecting the knight with the queen while blocking the check. But we can go ahead and capture this pawn. At least we believe we can. Uh, and that is what we will do. And then we expect to see pawn to b4. So, that would be f8 to c5. Alright, so what does it play? It says b2 to b4. I think I said b2 to b5 before. I don't mean that. Uh, I'm looking at this. I'm trying to read these things upside down. And I get a little confused all the time. Um, and I think we will now proceed with our plan to capture this b5, b4 pawn. B, we will capture b4 before it can capture us. And then we when they capture our bishop, we will recapture with the knight, and we, we think we have a good position. So we will say c5 to b4. Okay, so it does capture, like so. C takes b4. I have now sacrificed a bishop, so let's see if I will get punished or if it will work out for me when I play this move, capture the pawn with my knight. So that would be c6 to b4.
So it plays F1 to F2. Now E1 to E2. Wow, so it does play this move here. Wow, but I think we must be winning now. So what we have just seen is probably uh, a result of something called the horizon effect. So the way a chess computer works, a traditional chess computer, is that it will look ahead uh, some moves and then it will calculate, it will turn the whole position into a bit of an equation saying, okay, I have this many pieces, my opponent has that many pieces, uh, and then it will give itself points for maybe having a safe king or controlling the center or what have you. And then it will evaluate all the moves and choose the best one, the one that gives the best results with the least amount of risk. Chess, however, is an extremely complicated game, as you no doubt know yourself if you have played even just a little bit. So what does that mean? It means that the search for moves, how many moves it looks ahead, uh, has to stop at some point. Actually, it has to stop pretty uh, early. Uh, even for modern chess computers, uh, doing a wide search of all the different options is uh, its not really possible. And for hardware from 1979, it's not possible at all. So the horizon effect is that the computer will calculate up until a certain horizon. It cannot see, however, beyond the horizon because it, um, it, uh, it reaches a limit. Where we as humans, we work different, we, differently. We, uh, we try to, if you saw how I tried to calculate uh, what we did earlier, so I had some ideas about what I wanted to do. I had intent. I had some intuition based on my knowledge of chess. Uh, I'm not saying that I, what I did was correct, but that was the procedure I used. And then I tried to make the idea work. I found out, okay, that doesn't work. Then I reversed a little bit, and then I tried a different way to make the idea work, and then I looked further and further ahead uh, in the lines that I thought was critical. So I wasn't calculating pawn to h6, pawn to h5, rook to g8. I was There was a lot of moves I was not calculating, saving a lot of brain energy where the computer is not uh, able to really do the same. It has to look at a lot of different moves that are not relevant to the position at all. And one of the uh, things that has really happened in computer chess since then is that what we call iterative deepening, uh, that it, that process of exploring interesting branches of the game tree of the calculations further and uh, getting deeper with each iteration uh, has really, really, really come a long way to the point where uh, they are now play a, they now play at superhuman uh, strength, the computers. However, I think we have a very good position now against the chess challenger because we can play this bishop check. And I think we may win the game in short order. It's backed up by the knight. So queen takes, knight takes. Um, so we play uh, C, F, 5 to D, 3, check. Um, F, all right, all right, so now it plays 
e2 All right. It says e2 to d3. But that is not a legal move. Because I have the knight here. Um what? Am I reading this correctly? E2 to d3. What is even supposed to be on e2? The, the king is on e2. e2 to d3. Did I key it in the wrong way? I think here yeah, that either I made a mistake in keying in the moves somewhere, or there was a bug in the program. Uh, so let's call it a draw and have another game where I will be very careful to key in the moves correctly. Um, let's just uh, look at how this game would end if the machine doesn't give up the queen. If it gives up the queen, I shall be very happy to capture that queen with the knight and then capture the other knight and I will have so many pieces I will be winning easily if the king goes here then this is checkmate check from the knight and the queen so you cannot even capture the knight so that only leaves um, this move uh, where I'm not sure what the best move is, except that it's probably just this check. So still, if you go back here, it's going to be checkmate. So now machine would have to go there. Um, check here. Um, then you go there. And what is the finishing blow? Probably it's just this check. You are going to have to capture that with the queen. That is the only way out because all of these moves will lose instantly. So you capture with the queen, capture with bishop now machine has to find a way to save this knight uh, it's a very huge advantage for me okay let's set up the board again and try to figure this out see if we can play a full game of chess against the chess challenger And 
it please. C5, let's try and unbalance the position at once. It plays C4, so the queen scambit. Let's try to hit it with an opening that I don't really know anything about, but that, other than it's fun, with uh, the Albin counter gambit, E5. E1 to A4, check. Uh, that can't be a good move. Uh, I mean, I can. I could uh, stop stop the check like that. But I think also this move could be good. Um, Because if takes, then takes, if threatens, then takes. So I think just this knight move could be good. Alternatively, we could try and threaten the queen with bishop to d7. But I don't like that as much. So knight to c6 it is. D4 takes E5. All right. And here, basically, one of the only things I know about the counter Elbin counter gambit is that there's a theme in this position of playing pawn to D4 here. Usually, they haven't played Queen A A4, so I don't know. Uh, how it changes the position, but let's go with pawn to d4. So that would be d5 to d4. So b1, g1 to f3. Put out the knight makes a lot of sense. Um, so how do we want to proceed? How about developing the bishop here to f5? That could be a potentially good move. We could also look at Putting this bishop here, bishop to c5, could be interesting. Um, and I like that move. Not sure why exactly, but I feel I'll go with my intuition here and play bishop to c5. So it plays c1 to um, g5. Okay, wow. So that is threatening the queen. I do see that. But I must admit that seems like a very strange move. Because I think I can get a lot of development going here. If I play just f6. Then if they capture with the pawn I can recapture with my knight. Have a lot of development going. If they capture that with the bishop I capture with the queen. So I think f6 here is excellent. Um, and I will play pawn from f7 to f6. Okay. 
to G5, back to D2. So it goes all the way back. So it was able to look far ahead and see that if it captures these capture did all these captures, then it would be uh, worse for it because I would have the development. The problem now for the machine, of course, is that I can play f6 takes uh, e5 uh, and regain my pawn with what I believe is a just a dominating uh, position, except I am afraid of knight takes uh, because, of course, I cannot recapture with my knight because it's pinned to the king by the queen. So, and I was hoping here that I would have some way to easily threaten the knight and have it move, but it can maybe just exchange itself off from my knight. So maybe that whole plan wasn't as good as I thought it was. Um, but how about playing bishop to d7? How about that? Because I'm still not afraid of the machine taking here. And with the bishop on d7, this knight is freed up. Uh, and we can have all sorts of discovered attacks against the queen. All right. Let's go for that. That looks very promising. So c8 to d7. Okay, let's see. d2 to f4. So here we see that we are not playing against a real intelligence, but an artificial intelligence. The silicon inside this little thing here. Uh, because if the machine wanted the bishop on f4, then why go to d2 first? Why not just put it on f4 right away? Another thing about that move is, I think we can actually still take the pawn. Because if they recapture our knight, we will capture their queen. So, I guess maybe I can even... I can even just take with the knight directly. That could be kind of interesting. But, um... Queen moves, do I have probably not going to be able to capture there? I think I like just capturing with the pawn to have this nice pawn center that can roll forward. So let's play f6 takes e5. f6 takes e5. Enter. E4, F4 to E5. Okay, so it does take... So that's quite interesting. Maybe we are getting the horizon effect again. This shouldn't be too much of a problem for us. We will recapture with the knight. That cannot be recaptured, although it is not defended, because we will then capture the queen. So we play c6 to e5. And the machine wants to move the queen to b3, 
we want an entire bishop there for just a pawn. So we want two thirds of a bishop, you could say. Um, and I think one way to go about this position could be to just exchange this knight off. That could be one way to do it. Um, I think, I don't think I want to do that because maybe it will recapture with the queen and maybe I just want to play queen to e7, defending the knight. I think I'm completely okay with the computer capturing this uh, b7 pawn. I think it's a waste of time for the machine. Um, I think I may even have some strong attack there. Yeah, so we will play uh, queen to d7, e e7. So it plays f3 to e5. Okay, it does capture. So we will recapture. Um, with what I think should be quite a good attack coming up here. So it's e7 takes e5. E, yes. b3 to b7. Now we are ahead of on material. Uh, we could end up uh, losing this rook here on a8 if we don't uh, move it. Um, but uh, maybe that's even fine. Um, but maybe we should just move it because our position is is so good that there's no need for any risk and we just play rook to d8 uh, now the rook is on this nice diagonal towards a uh, file i mean towards the king uh, so rook on a8 to d8 a8 to d8 and now we see g7 excuse me b7 to d5 okay um i think we probably have a forced to win here so the computer what's wrong with this position for the computer of course it's down material because we have the extra bishop but uh, but it's also like all these guys are not doing anything where well, we have a very active pawn very active queen two active bishops I think this check is going to be devastating so C, C5 to B4. And it plays B1 to D2, like so. So I just want to get the computer on a light square, you see, because if I get the computer on a light square, I can probably have some discovered check where I can uh, then capture the queen with the rook, you see. Um, how about trying to lure the king 
out by capturing here check takes then maybe check king back no it's not so effective how about a move like queen here threatening checkmate immediately um, if we see something like this we can just capture that we're going to be winning so exactly how will the computer defend against queen to f4 it will have to play something like rook here which we can then attack with this bishop get the discovered attack uh, then there will be a check here though we can block that with the knight it's going to be quite okay so we are looking at queen to f4 yeah i think queen f4 is good so queen from e5 to f4 e5 to f4 yeah so the computer plays a1 to d1 as discussed i think we can go ahead and play this bishop out get our discovered attack uh, we will probably face this check but we can block that so we will play bishop from d7 to a4 d7 to a4 so we see d5 to e6 the check as we had sort of anticipated i think a good way to block this check will just be knight to e7 um, so we retain the right to castle should we ever need it um, i mean could also move the king there are no more checks here but there's also no more checks after knight e7 so i just think g8 to e7 g8 e7 g8 to e7 and now what will the machine do uh it plays b2 to b3 um so that makes a lot of sense um so how do we proceed here how do we proceed so our bishop is of course under attack but something like just rook here could be quite good a benefit of having the knight here is now there's no check on c8 because the knight covers that square and i think we are quite close to checkmating the queen queen would have to go all the way back here um, I don't know if we had something more forcing than that no I think just this rook move d8 to d6 should be pretty good we expect queen here yes that is what we see um, how close are we to checkmating the queen 
rook here is very close, but it has that square. Um, so that's, we're not doing that maybe. Um, we could also go like bishop here with the same idea of checkmating the queen. Also getting out of the attack. If the queen goes here, we have this. So I think just a4 to d7 is good. a4 to d7. So now it goes to it goes to g3, um, offering up an exchange for the queen. I had hoped to find a faster way to end the game than just trade queens and and play an end game, I must say. So maybe something like queen uh, h6 here. So f4 to h6, so we don't trade the queens, but keep on the pressure. We can then castle soon. I think f4 to h6 it is. It is. And then it plays e2 to e4. Wow. Does it know about Ang Pesang? That is the million dollar question. Does it know that I can capture it like that? Uh, if you don't know, that's a real rule. It's called Ang Pesang. And when uh, the machine or when your opponent makes this sort of double jump, uh, over a square that's attacked by one of your pawns, you can capture it Ang Pasang, like so. Which I'm pretty sure is what I want to do in this position. Yeah. But I don't know if it has that rule, actually. D4 takes E3. It did know about Ang Pesang. That's cool. It now plays e2 to... It does what? Well, it plays f2 to e3. So it just captures. Like so. And that is fair enough. But I think... Uh, we should be quite close to concluding this game. This king cannot survive. Now we castle and let's just look at the quality of our pieces. This bishop is excellent. It is pinning this knight to the king, so this knight cannot move. This rook is excellent. It's defended by a pawn. It is attacking this knight that can't move so it's uh, applying a lot of pressure also sliding th uh, slicing through the middle the center of the board good center control uh, the queen is excellent uh, looking at the e3 pawn which if this queen moves we can come in and capture after castle the king will be safe and snug as a buck in a rock here in his castle and this other rook will attack down this line and all the pieces are just looking at this king even this bishop has some relevant places it can go for instance here to attack this rook if we get this queen to move 
so I think castling here is good. I think we just input the king move into the machine, but I'm not sure. Technically, castling is a king move, so I think we put in king g8, so e8 to g8. g8, e8 to g8, and then we uh, then we assume that the computer knows that I also put the rook on f8. Let's see. So it plays. So it plays g3 to f5. Oh, g3 to e5. That is a legal move, like so. Okay. So I guess we must kind of have a way to just close out the game. I mean, maybe just rook here. To just uh, gang up on the e3 pawn. I don't see any any way out of that for the machine, maybe rook f5, but it doesn't add so many new threats, so I, I think just rook e6, so we say d6 to e6, d6 to e6, attacking the queen, So e5 to c7, what? Am I reading that correctly? e5, oh right, I'm just, yeah, c7 here. Okay, um, I think we have checkmate in two moves now. Uh, queen on h6 takes e3. That's the first move. So that would be h6 to e3. e3. h6 to e3. Um, and there is only one move, that is f1 to f2 with the bishop. We are going, of course, to capture that. And that is checkmate. Thank you for the game. Let's input it and see if it works. Uh, e3 to e2. As you can see, it blinks in I lose, though the chess challenger has been beaten. Uh, we did it, guys. We defeated the chess challenger. I loved this. I have to do another video with this. Thanks again so much to our partner, Yours App, uh, for making this video possible and for allowing me to get my hands on this amazing piece of chess technology and history. Uh, and yeah, if you want to get the amazing US app to improve your mental health and general well-being with awesome ASMR and breathing techniques and philosophy and meditation, and I mean, there's everything, stories relaxation techniques, everything. You can get 60% off just for you guys by going to usapp.com slash chess or using my affiliate code chess at the checkout. Thanks for watching. I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.